This is Dark Illumination Report Podcast Episode 6. The views expressed on this podcast are the views of the podcast host only. The host neither represents or endorses any specific satanic organization or tradition. If you enjoyed the show, please take a moment to leave us a review on iTunes, and please tell a friend. I'd really appreciate it. You can also follow me on Twitter at RJWO15. If you have questions or comments, you can leave us a message at speakpipe.com forward slash D-I-R podcast. That's speakpipe.com forward slash D-I-R podcast. This is the Dark Illumination Report podcast with R.J. Womack. Hi, everybody. I'm glad you're here. I hope life's been treating you well since the last time we got together for the last episode. In this week's episode, I'm going to be talking about a few tips that I think will help you organize your practices better. So without further ado, let us get into the main topic of the show for today. Now, I said I was going to carry on from last episode talking about what I intended to talk about the last time, but ran out of time because I got sidetracked by talking about other stuff. And one of the things I wanted to talk about is this idea that magic is supposed to be something you do or a ritual that you do and then you forget about. I think this is the wrong attitude to have because I think magic should be a combination of both what you do in this world and what you do in the spirit world. I think they work hand in hand. You know, people like to talk about the hermetic um, axiom as above, so below. But one of the things they don't talk about as much is the other part of the axiom, which is as below, so above. And that basically means as above, so below means that whatever you do in the spirit world affects the physical world. And also vice versa, what you do in the physical world can have an impact on the spirit world. So when you do ritual, I think you have to acknowledge both aspects. With this in mind, that's the exact reason why I have a problem with people who say, you should do a ritual and then forget about it because I think you should be doing everything in your power to to bring about what you want to happen in this world, both by your physical actions in this world and your spiritual activities and your ritual activities, not just one or the other. It should be a combination of both. You should bring everything you have to bear to make manifest your desires. And if you do one and not the other, it's an imbalanced approach. And if it's an imbalanced approach, it's not going to be as effective as if you use both the things that you can control in the physical world and in the spiritual world. That's the whole idea. That's one of the reasons why I say, you know, to me, Satanism is a religion where the magician and the Satanist has one foot in the spirit world and one foot in the physical world. Neither side is more important than the other. They have equal importance and equal value. And that's the approach that I take in everything that I do and everything that I talk about in this podcast. And as I've said in previous episodes, all of this comes from my belief in the fact that Satan is a god of balance. He's a god of nature and a god of spirit. So as Satanist, our whole approach to our spiritual development should be a constant balancing of these two aspects of nature, both the spiritual and the material. As Satanists, we don't try to deny these things. We don't try to run from our carnal nature in hopes of developing our spiritual nature. We accept our carnal nature and want to develop our spiritual nature at the same time, both simultaneously. The Christians, on the other hand, try to deny their carnal self and only focus on the spirit world, whereas Satanists focus on both the spirit world and the material world. And so to neglect one or the other in your approach to magic or an approach to spirituality is just kind of naive and not necessarily the best way to approach personal development. Let's say you do a ritual one day where you decide that you want Satan's help to make you a successful entrepreneur and eventually a corporate CEO one day. If you spend all your time doing drugs and not doing anything to further your career or to develop yourself as a person or to get yourself the education required to run a company by actually engaging in business activities. Do you think 
that just by doing a ritual to Satan, he's going to make you a corporate CEO one day? Do you really think that's how it works? Do you really think Satan's going to move mountains just to give you something that you want if you make no effort on your part to aid in your own development? I think this attitude is naive, and I don't think it's the way things really work. I think the spirits will help you if you help yourself. I think they will help you if you put some effort into it. You have to be the architect of your own destiny, at least to some degree. They will aid you, but they're not going to do all the work for you. I mean, if Satan wanted victims, then he would be no different than the Christian God. I mean, what good is it to be a Satanist if you're waiting for somebody to hand you everything? If you're not willing to work towards it and take it for yourself, then you might as well be a Christian and wait for somebody to answer your prayers. Satan does answer prayers and Satan will help you, but you shouldn't wait on him to do everything for you. To me, Satanists are supposed to be people of action, not words. Our rituals should reflect that attitude, as far as I'm concerned. We should be taking action both in the spirit world and in the physical world to manifest what we desire, to manifest what we need. And we should never stop working towards our goals and using every method at our disposal to achieve them. It's just that simple. So with that said, I'm going to get into what I think are some simple suggestions that have helped me, and I hope they'll help you. The first piece of advice I want to give you is to start a daily routine. Start a daily routine of prayer and meditation. Set aside the first half hour to an hour when you first wake up to do meditation and prayer and read sacred text. If you do this on a regular basis, I guarantee you it'll make a difference in your spiritual growth and you won't regret doing it. When I do it, I feel centered, I feel better, I feel more focused, and my day goes better. And I think if you do it, you'll find the same is true for you. When you first start thinking of ideas for your daily routine, you're likely to make two mistakes. One is to set your expectations way too high, and the other is to try to do too much too fast. When you first start your daily routine, it's better to keep it simple by keeping your prayer rituals simple and your meditations basic, basic breathing exercises for relaxation at first, because you don't want to overdo it, because if you overdo it, then you might get discouraged and you might lose interest in doing your daily practice because it becomes too much of a chore. You don't want it to turn into a burden. You want it to be something you look forward to. If you do decide to do a prayer ritual, do rituals that fire you up, that get you jazzed and excited about Satanism, because Ultimately, I mean, this is supposed to be a way of charging your spiritual battery, so to speak. So if it doesn't help you to get motivated to do Satanism or to hit your day in a positive mindset, then it's really not doing its job in the first place. The whole idea is to connect with the spirits, to connect with the demons, and to remind yourself of what this is all about, why you're a Satanist and why your religion is important to you and to make sure that you stay true to your principles and your ideas. If the rituals you're doing don't help you do that, then they're not really achieving the purpose they're meant for. Once you've finished your reading and rituals for the day, take about 10 minutes to write down your thoughts and any ideas you may have about what you can add to your routine. The main thing is to make sure that you write down anything significant that happens to you and make sure you write down anything of value that you think you got out of the experience. The other suggestion that I'd like to give you, if you accept the idea that uh, life is the great initiation and you accept the fact that everything we do has an impact on us and you accept the fact that magicians should have one foot in the spirit world and one foot in the material world, then this next suggestion I'm going to give you is going to be helpful to you. If you don't agree with these ideas and some of the suggestions that I've given, um, then you might not necessarily agree with some of the ideas that I'm going to talk about. If you agree with the idea that our thoughts and our actions in our daily life lead to the results that happen and that thoughts are very powerful and our intention is very powerful, then it obviously stands to reason that we need to be more careful and more deliberate in our planning when it comes to the different aspects of our life. 
with all of the books and all of the things that we have in bookstores and, and that we can buy today about the law of attraction and the importance of intention, the importance of directed will, it's always been shocking to me that there are not more people, especially occultists, who pay more attention to having a life's purpose or directing their will. Directing one's will towards a singular life's purpose is the whole premise upon which Aleister Crowley's religion of Thelema is based. That's what the whole thing means when he says, do what thou wilt should be the whole of the law. A lot of people get that mixed up and think it means do whatever you want. What it's talking about is finding your life's purpose, finding the reason for which your soul exists, and then putting all your energy and directing all your energy towards achieving that life's purpose. And to that end, I'm going to be talking about why I think it's important to find your life's purpose. I think every person, every magician should start out by trying to determine why their soul is here at this particular time in this particular place. What is the purpose for which you exist? And everything you do should come from that, should, should center around that idea. For me, it is to serve Satan and to preach Satan's message and to preach Satanism. That is my life's purpose. So my true will is to serve Satan. So if that's my true will, then everything I do should be directed towards achieving that goal. And I should try to eliminate the time I spend on activities that don't help me accomplish that goal. Most of the things we do in life should be an outgrowth of that true will or that true life's purpose. Most of our activities should center around furthering that goal. And if we're doing stuff that doesn't help us further that goal, then we should try to diminish it, try to limit it, and try to focus our energies on specific things that make our goals possible or our, our purpose possible. And so what I'd like to suggest to you today is that you take some time to think about what your true purpose is and whether you're doing what you're meant to do, whether you're serving Satan the way you should, whether you're serving yourself the way that you should. And what I mean by that is, are you doing the things that you really want to do? Are you accomplishing your desires? Are you accomplishing what you believe you're put here to do? And if you're not, why not? And I'd like you to take some time to think about that and write it down and really meditate on it. And I mean, literally meditate, sit down in a quiet spot, take some time to really think about who and what you are and why you're here. Once you've figured out what your life's purpose is, take some time to write it down and then move on to the next step. And that is determine what your core principles are based on what you've determined your life purpose to be. Your core principles should be those three to five things that you are unwilling to compromise on, which means what I mean by that is simply this. If someone were to hold a gun to your head today and tell you either you compromise these beliefs that you have or die, you would rather die than compromise them. It's actually should be about one to three things, not one to five things, because once you get beyond five things, uh, research has shown that you're not likely to uphold them. So it's simpler to have one to three core principles based on your life's purpose that you want to uphold and achieve and and you'll live by because if you don't you tend to drift you tend to not have a direction and people get lost and this is one of the things that i hear from satanists all the time is that i don't seem to have a direction or i don't have a purpose i'm just kind of drifting and it's because they haven't taken the time to write down their beliefs and goals in life and so what I'm trying to recommend here that you do is create a life plan for yourself to give your Satanism and your practices some structure to help you make sure that you stay true to yourself and stay true to your core values, whatever those happen to be. I'm not here trying to tell you what to believe or how to practice Satanism. I'm just trying to give you some uh, advice on how to structure your practices so they're a bit more organized so that you make sure that you're staying true to yourself. George Bernard Shaw said that life is not about finding yourself, it's about creating yourself. And another famous motivational speaker said that you must not be a wandering generality, you must become a meaningful specific. Did you know that it's estimated that only about 3% of people actually take the time to write down their goals, and even fewer than that actually take the time to think about their life's purpose? I find it interesting that we live in a society where we have written instructions for how to do almost everything. 
from twisting off a bottle cap to opening a door, but we don't have a written plan for the most important thing happening to us at this moment, which is our life. Doesn't that seem somewhat ridiculous when you consider the fact that we're in a religion that promotes the idea of manifesting your will? I know that some of you may be reluctant to do something like this because you feel somehow that by doing this typically normal thing, setting goals and writing them down doesn't sound very mystical or magical, and you may feel that it doesn't have anything to do with spirituality. And I can understand the initial feeling of having that idea. But you have to understand that I believe Satan gave us a mind. He gave us intelligence so that we can use all the tools at our disposal to help ourselves including science, including um, different techniques. So that to me, a true satanic magician uses all the tools at his or her disposal. He doesn't use just one method. He uses all of them that benefits him or her. And that's the way I look at it. You know, this is just another tool in the toolbox and it will help you be more directed, more focused, and it will give you a way to measure whether what you're doing is helping you and beneficial to you, and if you're keeping your promises to yourself and to Satan. This is one of the reasons why I always recommend to people that they should keep their packs that they make with Satan or the demons. A lot of people don't keep their packs, they end up burning them, but if you don't keep a copy of the pack that you made with the demons or with Satan, how are you going to know whether you're keeping your commitments that you made to him or whether he's keeping his promises to you and achieving what you want if you don't keep a copy? Um, you know, I've always felt like I need to have something to measure my progress against. How are you going to remember something if you made a pact like me when you're 12 years old, if you didn't keep a copy? Now, I didn't keep a copy of my original pact, but I've made several pacts since then. And I do have copies of some of those. Now, once you've sat down and determined what your life's purpose is, and you've determined what your core values or core principles are, then the third step is to determine one to three goals that you have for yourself to develop yourself spiritually, whether it's to develop yourself on a personal level or whether it's three things you want to do for Satan or it can be a combination of the two. One of the most important steps in this process, as far as I'm concerned, is making sure that your your life's purpose, your core principles and your goals all match up with each other. They're in harmony with each other. They don't conflict in any way. Because you want to make sure that everything you're doing is moving you towards your goal or towards your life's purpose or your true will, as the case may be. So you want to make sure that there's no conflict or any problems or any contrary ideas in any step in this process, because you want to get to your goals and you want to achieve what you want to achieve as smoothly as possible. And the less conflict and the more in harmony your um plan is, the better off you're going to be. One of the reasons I'm such a big advocate of the having a written plan or a um, life plan or a personal mission statement, as it were, is because I spent a lot of years just kind of going through the process of being a Satanist without having any real specific direction. And I found that I wasted a lot of time. Now that I have a written plan to follow, I really feel like I know where I'm going. I've taken the time to know what my purpose is, and I know exactly what I need to do to fulfill that purpose before anything happens to me. I mean, we have a limited amount of time in this world, and we want to make sure that we achieve the goals that we set for ourselves and the goals that we promised Satan we would achieve while we're here, because we don't know how long we have. And if we have no direction, if we have no plan, then how do we know how well we're doing with our life and our life's goals? One of the reasons I'm such a big advocate of this approach to Satanism is because I believe Satan is a very organized and very disciplined entity. Even though he does have chaotic aspects to his nature, like Dionysus or Pan, I believe there's nothing that Satan does without a purpose. Those things that appear to be chaos are not really chaos at all. They're just a way of causing dramatic change in a very quick fashion so that it'll achieve results faster to achieve his goals or the change that he requires of us. Since I'm of the belief that Satan is deliberate in everything that he does, it only stands to reason that if he's my God, I'd want to try to emulate him and be like him. So I want to try to be 
as deliberate and as intentional as I possibly can so that I can succeed the way he does. I believe Satan is a master tactician. I believe everything he does is with a purpose, with an objective in mind. I don't believe he does anything by accident or by happenstance. Anyway, that about wraps it up for today. So I hope you found this episode helpful. And even if you're not willing to go along with everything I suggest here, hopefully it'll give you some ideas for how to develop your own practice and maybe develop your own approach to your own personal development, both magically and personally. Before I go, I just wanted to let everybody know that I'm going to be doing a TV review of the A&E series, Damien, and also I'm going to be doing a book review of Packs with the Devil by Jason Black and Christopher Hyatt in an extra episode this week. Until then, take care. See you later, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Dark Illumination Report podcast. For the latest news headlines, show information, and more, go to rjwomack.com. That's rjwomack.com.